Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to have a go at modelling a cardboard box in Fusion. So we're going to do that in the sheet metal workspace. So at the top we normally need solids, surface mesh, grab the sheet metal. So then your top menu check bar changes slightly. It simplifies because there's not a great deal of tools to use. You still get like your sketches and all your other sketches, um, sketch tools. But we may not be doing things like flanges and sheet metal rules. So I'm going to click on sheet metal rules to begin with. And this is basically like automatically it will assign a material to your object and like the properties of that material. Now steel, if you've never used sheet metal before, steel will be your default. So you can come down and see and it'll tell you what the thickness of your material is, K factor, like bend radius, and this type of thing. I have got a custom material here, I got set as default for card. So I've changed the thickness slightly. I haven't messed with the K factor. Um, I have then changed the bend radius. So if you're planning on following along, um, those are the settings that I would put in to edit it. You go any material, hold over, click on that pencil, and then you can change the settings like that. And those are the settings that I've used. Um, I got those pretty much for just trial and error of trying to do things and sort of like what looked good and what didn't. So I'm going to start with the sketch. I'm going to start on this bottom plane here. I'm going to hit, and you see at the top, by the way, that all my sketch tools still appear as normal. I'm going to hit R on my keyboard for rectangle. Yeah, it's a rect uh, centre rectangle, I've come out, I'm going to do 200 by 300. Hit enter, and then hit finish sketch. So I've now got my sketch. Now, rather than do revolve, extrude, loft, that sort of thing, all we're going to do now is go to flange. And I'll just click on this surface here. And sheet metal rules, it goes to card because I set that as my default, but you can choose which material to use. And I'm going to click on OK. So that's the thickness I said it should do, and it's also going to show you how it's going to bend, so I'm going to show that now. So now, basically the rest of the tools you use are just the flange tool, so you can either click on there or right click, and because it's the last thing I did, repeat flange, or it's there as well. So I'm going to go to flange, I'm going to click on these edges, and then if I start to drag up, and zoom, you see what's happening, is it's starting to bend how I said it was, so basically what the bend radius was. Because obviously, uh, card has got less of a bend radius than steel and other metals because it's harder to bend that sort of thing. I'm going to drag up about where how tall I want my box to be and hit OK. So basically a bit of rinse repeat of that. Now I'm going to go on repeat flange and we're going to do some glue tabs for how the actual things would stick together. I'm just going to rotate around grab all these edges here. And then I'm going to drag it in. Okay, so you can see it's done very quickly. It's very easy to create the sort of shape you'd expect from like a cardboard sort of box. Now I'm going to show you now. I'm going to start to flip the flange again. I'm going to click here. I'm going to drag. But the problem I'm going to have. I'll grab this edge as well. I'm going to drag it to where it needs to be. I'll flip the wrong edge. I'll drag this edge. There we go. I'll drag it in. Now the problem is here, it's going to start to intersect. So I'm going to click OK, but then I get this error warning saying it's intersecting, which we don't want. So before I'm going to go back in time, before I do that, I'm going to go to extrude or E on my keyboard, grab these edges. And just bring them up a little bit somewhere like that and I'm going to right click edit feature and I'm going to re-grab those edges and now you see that it is no longer intersecting so I can probably bring that down a little further actually so let's go to edit feature and let's try and bring that down maybe a little bit so it's not quite as gappy, okay? So you see, like that, maybe I come down a little bit more. Like that, perfect. So I'm gonna do the same with the side. So again, I'm gonna to need to extrude these. So I'm gonna E on my keyboard for extrude, grab these edges here, drag that up. And again, I'm gonna right click, go to flange, 
grab this edge, grab this edge, and drag it in. Like that. Now I'm going to just check. Okay. Oh, got that pretty well. I've not got the intersector there. So very quickly, we managed to create the shape of a cardboard box. Now the other good thing about sheet metal in Fusion is you've got a uh, flat pattern. So if I click on that, it'll say pick a stationary face. So which stationary you want, face you want to stay still, and then it'll unfold everything for you. So you click on this surface, click OK, and see what's happened is it's unfolded the net as it would unfold for real, like in the real that world. So you, you know it's going to work. So the modeling side of things are done. Now we want to try and make it look a bit more like a cardboard box. So I'm going to jump over to the solids. Now normally you hit A for appearance and then find the material that you want. Now there isn't a standard cardboard material, so we need to create our own material. So I have got a video of how to do that, but I'll go through it now as well. So I found this website, found this link. So I'll put this link in the description. So we've got our color, our normal map and our roughness. So I'm going to show you how to put those in. So basically follow the link, click on the images, download them, and then under solids, go to modify and manage material. Now I've already got this here, so I'm just going to delete it to show you how to do it. So with materials, you've got appearance and you've got physical. Physical is when you're doing like technical drawings or simulations, you need to have the actual physical properties of the material. Appearance is just like surface level, making it look how it looks. I'm going to come down here to go to create new material and new generic material. Drag this over, and let's call this cardboard. So up here you get a preview of how it looks. Normally you have like this shader object, but you can choose all sorts of different materials that you want. But the shader one's quite good because it shows you sort of like the sphere, it shows you edges and that sort of thing. So image, I'm going to click on here and find the one that I want. So first of all, I've got this texture here. You see it updates with what it is. Glossiness is to do with how shiny or reflective something is. So you can, obviously cardboard isn't, so you can bring it down. Um, but you can also use an image, so I'm going to click on image, and I have got this image here. And then the other settings for this particular thing, we're not really going to use. So reflectivity, transparency, cast, not really concerning us, but the bump map is to do with how 3D things are. If you've used Maya or Blender before, um, it will actually make the object like 3D, uh, or the images, the uh, materials 3D rather. But with Fusion, essentially it uses lights and shadows to like trick you into making it look like it's 3D. So I'm going to click on Bump, and we want Normal Map, which is this purple looking thing. And for now, I'm just going to drag it up all the way up, hit Apply, and Cancel. So now, if I hit A on my keyboard, in my materials, if I go over to Favorites, it's now there, so I can drag that over. Now it still looks a little bit off, so we can still edit it, so I'm going to double click. First thing I want to do is let's rotate that 90 degrees like that. And it's quite large. So what I want to do is bring that scale down a little bit so it looks about right. Something like that. And I just want to show you what the uh, bump map does. So bump map here, so I set it to a thousand minute. If you have a look at it, if I start to drag it, you see it gets lighter and darker depending on where on the scale you view. So you're sort of like playing around until you're happy with how it looks. So it's kind of like using the shadows to trick you into making it look more or less um, 3D. So I might do something like that. I'm just going to copy that number, hit apply, like that. Now, that's worked everywhere, but the only problem is that the top two here are going in the wrong direction. So I'm going to bring that in but I'm just going to do it on the face and I'm going to just mess with the scale so I'm going to check scale for that it's 44 so let's do 44 there and then advance and the bump and let's just paste in what I've got there hit OK and I can drag that there as well so very quickly we managed to create a 3D box so only thing left to do to make it look a bit more realistic is let's add some decals, sort of like labeling and that sort of thing. So insert and decals. So I've got a few that I've downloaded. So we've got Royal Mail tracking label. Let's click on this surface here. Let's rotate this round. 180. Try and change this off. Make it a bit 
it's smaller, bring it to position, something like that. Um, and then we've got a few other, well, let's go Geeko. So I've got things like Fragile, because we don't know what we're boxing up. Bring that in a bit. And turn change bases off. Now if I hit OK here, it looks too like dark. So what I can do under uh, decals, a decal, I'm gonna mess with the opacity a little bit and do something like 17. You see like fade so it looks like a bit more like it's printed on the box. Can I do the same again? Fusion has crashed. Nope, there we go, we're back. Okay, so I have got uh, this one. Again, let's bring that down. 70. And then let's turn the chamber pieces off. And then I think I've got one more decal and then fragile and then handle with care that's the one let's do 70 turn chain faces off drag that in like that so then I can jump over to render see how it starts to look might play with the lighting a little bit, so what sort of lighting looks like one light, looks quite good, maybe skylight, I like skylight, let's go with skylight, okay, so the only other thing, I'm going to give this a quick save so I don't, um, is you might want to try and like add like tape or something like that and there's a few different ways you could go about doing that but one of the easiest what I might do is like go to create a form and I might go to like create a um, plane and then click on that surface for example maybe I just draw something like that OK, finish form. Now, what I could do so, in fact, let's just go in it for a second. Let's go to create, to modify, sorry, and thicken, which should be here. Let's do like 0.1. Hit enter. There you go. So now what I might do is hit A for appearance. And obviously, again, there's not like a cellar tape in there, but if I do something like uh, plastic, I do like a clear or something like that. You know, it sort of doesn't look like there's tape on there. So if I go to render now, yeah, it sort of like, looks like there's like cellar tape on there. So maybe let's try and do the same thing. Let's do a plane. So something like that. Then let's just thicken that, so modify and thicken. I did point one, hit enter. Let's finish form. And again, let's go A for appearance and just grab that. 
There you go. Yeah, so it looks, looks like I've got a little bit of tape on there. So let's just copy and paste that piece now, I think. So let's just go to there. Which body is it? Is it that one? Okay, let's go. We'll see, control V. And let's just bring that here, rotate it around. That. And rather than do that, let's go to construct mid plane. I was going to do a mid plane. In fact, have I got right? I did that right in the middle, so actually, don't need to worry about that. So let's just go to create mirror. Let's do bodies. Let's grab that body, mirror plane. That's there, and then let's do the same on this side here, so that's much easier. Let's do that. Create mirror body, not that body, that body, mirror plane. Okay, there we go. So, not something you need to do, but if you just like a, a render, I want to look a little bit more realistic. It's a bit of fun to time model on. Let's go to render. Okay, so we've got our tape on there. Let's have a go at rendering, so I'll give that another little save. Put that to local render. And that is how to model a combo box using sheet metal in Fusion 360. Hopefully you found that useful and interesting. If you've got any questions, please leave a comment down below or email me at designwithsimon.outlook.com.